Hi, this is Carl again, and this is part six of the discussion on lingua genesis language learning methodology. Uh, what I want to do in this particular part is to talk about the teaching of language uh, using grammatical explanations and therefore exploring into the grammatical aspects of any particular modern foreign language. Now, some of you may have already seen that here on YouTube, what I've done is to release a number of videos in which I explain the essential differences in meaning between a number of words. For example, in one video, I talk about the differences in meaning between the two verb infinitives, ser and estar, both of which translate into English as to be. And then on another video, what I do is to try to explain as clearly as possible the differences in usage between the three question words, que, cual, and qualis, which translate into English or can translate into English as either what or which, as in which one or which ones, or just basically which. Now, I think one of the main reasons as to why I decided to put those videos together was not to um, give learners of the modern foreign language, especially in this case Spanish, out there the impression that I was a teacher who was obsessed with um, the grammar and the grammatical structures of a modern foreign language, what I wanted to do was to, in a way, highlight the fact that I recognise that these types of grammatical explanations will undoubtedly occur in textbooks and grammar references and that they will be brought up by some language teachers in class. But unlike the way in which um, aspects of this nature are traditionally taught using the complex terminology, um, highlighting cases which the learner could view and then think to himself or herself, well, that's all fair and good, but this example of language which I have seems to break that rule, so therefore can I fully trust what the rule in the book is saying? Um, what I decided to do instead was to simplify as far as possible these explanations, um, to shun away from using the complex grammatical terminology which is traditionally and commonly associated with explanations of that type and try to raise any doubts in the learner's mind as regards how certain words which have more than one translation into English can actually be simplified. So um, what I want to talk about in this video as well is um, I don't want anybody out there to get the misconception that I am solely uh, a teacher of language grammar. Uh, obviously, there are learners out there whose basis of learning um, is founded on uh, an addiction to the language grammar. But the majority of learners do, in fact, wish to try to, as I say, shun away from having to view and listen to any form of complex grammatical terminology and grammatical explanations uh, but indeed where any explanation of grammar is concerned then we do have to try as far as possible to uh, simplify the language which we use in explaining how language works in any particular instance and making use of illustrative examples and uh, clarity of explanation to make the learners feel comfortable um, with this aspect of language learning um, so yes, as I say, what I don't want anybody out there uh, to think is that I am solely concerned with um, teaching grammar um, and doing so in a complicated manner because um, what I do, as I say, or try to do is to make it as simplified as possible. Um, so what I will uh, what I will do now is, to, is just to conclude this video and say that obviously there are learners out there who are quite fanatical about language grammar, but on the other hand, there are those who uh, prefer much more to take in the vocabulary of the language, to have uh, an understanding of um, how language fits together. Uh, they learn set phrases, or because they prefer to learn set phrases, um, but at the same time, we do have to try as far as possible to implement a strategy, a methodology whereby we can get the learner to understand how 
the language works in its syntax. That is to say, how do the words which make the question or a statement come together? Um, but obviously, as I say, we have to, to do it in some way whereby we're not um, using too much complex uh, and complicated grammatical terminology um, and, it's, uh, and it acts in um, it acts in a way whereby we can explain something uh, and implement um, an explanation and get the learner to understand slowly but surely we can integrate uh, different learning styles together so that we're not focusing primarily on um, an explanation of language grammar and we're not prioritizing um, a lengthy explanation of language grammar. What we're trying to do is to incorporate different teaching strategies and different resources into the learning program and uh, just gradually implement um, the teaching of language grammar um, as um, smoothly and as slowly as possible without the learner being able to recognize that we are, um, as teachers, trying to uh, shove the grammar of the modern foreign language down their throats, when in fact that is something which the majority of learners could do without.